Greetings folks, in the journey of our data science, let's continue with a few uh, use cases of our data science in real world. Let's start with finance uh, thing and let's see what we have here. Well, how can we protect? From a finance domain standpoint, what is it that they would like to do? How can we protect our company against loss from criminals, okay? So what does that mean? Well, here is a quick description of what that means. It's about fraud detection, guys, okay? There are many ki kinds of financial fraud. One is securities trading, one is insurance, one is credit card. You might have heard uh, sometimes uh, our, our cards and things like that, uh, our credit cards and things like that. What happens is imagine you are at Hyderabad and uh, you go ahead and uh, swipe your card and uh, a few minutes later, uh, maybe you get a call saying that, hey, um, you know, it, it looks like there's a purchase happening. Um, yeah, the call may be from your credit card company and they, they're calling and trying to verify if you made a purchase in Hyderabad and after a few minutes there's another purchase they have noticed uh, that uh, they uh, maybe uh, uh, occurred or appeared in Mumbai or New Delhi and things like that. So in a few minutes we can move from Hyderabad to Mumbai. So it's something unusual pattern which is happening on a credit card. What is that? Well, that's an example of how we can use data science here. Credit card fraud detection, uh, the most widely known and please confirm the unusual activity we have detected. So that's an example of an unusual activity, guys, okay? Even if we, if we were to fly from Hyderabad to Mumbai, in a few minutes, there can be, it can be possible that our card is getting swiped and that is, the distance is too far for, uh, for us to reach and that's an example of an unusual pattern or activity. The specific uh, techniques differ. Uh, and our proprietary. So every card company may have their own ways of figuring out and identifying these patterns and things like that. That's what uh, they have. Uh, usually they have one thing in common that is access to lots of data. So if you take any credit card company, they may have hundreds, thousands or millions of customers at any point of time, uh, multiple transactions are ha happening. So in other words, when a transaction happens, there's some data which is getting stored into uh, the database, some data is getting stored into their log files, tracking the IP, the latitude, longitude and things like that. So a lot of spatial analysis and things like that can be used in this kind of uh, scenarios. And what would we do? Well, solution, well, we would get all the data, structured data, unstructured data, which is the log data and things like that, plug it into something called HDFS via Flume or maybe Kafka and then use machine learning uh, techniques, the predictive modeling algorithms and things like that to identify the unusual patterns. It is not possible for us to go ahead and write these machine learning techniques manually inside a, or, or it's not possible for us to uh, manually code the business rules because there are going to be uh, millions and millions of permutations and combinations if we were to write manually the business rules using a programming language such as Java or .NET. So that's where machine learning comes to our rescue. It internally uses some mathematical principles which will allow us uh, to find some unusual patterns, uh, activities and relationships and flag us and tell us what is probably a fraud versus what is probably a genuine uh, scenario and things like that. So that is an example of a financial domain. Moving on to the retail products guys, okay, which products will this customer enjoy and here is a slightly detailed description. There is something called collaborative filtering which suggests the products. We get onto Amazon or maybe Netflix or Last.fm. You get onto Amazon and let's say we are searching for a book called Data Science or maybe Hadoop. Immediately there are a bunch of recommendations which are coming on. What is that? Well, that is an example of a data product and based on what I am being recommended, it depends on based on what others have already uh, clicked, viewed and you know what they may have purchased and things like that. And these things change from time to time. They have trends of their own. It is again not possible for us to manually go ahead and write the business rules to figure out the trends. So by using Using machine learning algorithms, we can go ahead and automatically try to predict or uh, kind of uh, which, uh, they, they will internally use the mathematical principles which will identify the patterns as to what is the trend with what is going on and be able to come up with proper recommendations or rather more genuine recommendations on a product based on the trend that is going on guys, okay? And what is the objective of this? Well, it increases the sales, it attracts more customers and improves the satisfaction. As a customer of a particular, if I'm a, if I'm a person who is new to data science, I may not necessarily have an idea of the books which are about the data science guys. So what do we do? Well, in such case, looking at those recommendations, I come to know, okay, there are these additional books that I could uh, actually review or actually review before purchase and then make a 
um, you know more uh, genuine uh, purchase which will improve my satisfaction right so that is what the and as a result of that if i'm happy with my uh, first purchase i will come back so in other words it's attracting me again to make more purchases and as a result of that sales increase so these are the techniques that we are going to be studying more in this course and solution overview more from a solution standpoint what we would do in a scenario like that well capture all the activity the the clicks from where from which uh, link to which link we are navigating to which page we are going what is it that we are purchasing what is it that we are browsing for and things like that this is all the customer activity and then we have the preferentials data the preference data may refer to you know my gender my age and uh, some basic other kinds of information which is generally uh, entered when we open an account and then uh, we find other customers with similar preferences. So, based on my preferential data, my customer activity, we can go ahead and try to figure out who are the other customers who are like me. So, whatever purchases I am making, the customers, the same customers will be also shown similar kind of recommendations because there is a good likelihood the characteristics match and they will also make the purchase and again determine which products these customers are rated highly. So, sometimes we may use the ratings that different customers are uh, uh, providing on their sites and based on these ratings we may come up with a recommendation and provide to other customer that the, these are the products which might be useful or for uh, for a particular uh, thing that they are browsing or looking for and that is a quick example of a product recommendation in the retail domain guys ok. Moving on advertisements how can we make our advertisements more relevant to the user what does that mean well what that means is um, serving more ads effectively. Imagine you are a 10 year old kid and uh, you get onto either Facebook or maybe some other site and it does not uh, a more the meaningful ad for a 10 year old kid is to uh, show maybe a, a Reebok ad or a Nike ad versus a Hadoop or a data science ad and uh, based on the preferential preferences that we have if I am a software engineer and uh, I go ahead and access my Facebook or uh, maybe uh, Twitter or other sites it is probably more meaningful or rather it is more meaningful for us to show ads of Hadoop and data science versus Reebok and uh, Nike guys. So, at what point of time what ad to show to what kind of person all these things is what we mean by effectively showing the right ads at the right point of time to the right people guys ok. Advertising is a significant source of revenue for web properties we may already uh, you may already have an idea about the Google ads and things like that it is a significant source of revenue uh, we can make money out of that. Pay per click is much more valuable than paper impression guys ok. Pay per click refers to our actually when we look at an ad um, it is not necessary that we may have looked at the ad we may have navigated to another page that is just a pay per view. When we look at the ad if we click on that that is what is pay per click. So, pay per click the poor people or the way number of persons who have actually clicked on a link have tried have tr uh, have dig deep into a particular ad and try to get more information that is more um, useful than the people which is uh, who is just viewing which we are unsure they, whether they have really viewed it or not guys ok. So, that is what we mean by pay per click. So, we have a slightly more information who are the customers who are more interested in our project because they have clicked on a particular ad and that is what we mean by it is more valuable than a pay per view. We can therefore boost the revenue by increasing the click through rate. So, by understanding certain characteristics of certain kinds of people who are clicking who are digging deep we can come up with recommendations and show the right ads to the other people who are there. Machine learning techniques again come to our rescue and identifying who are the customers whom we can target versus whom we can uh, whom we, we need not target and so we can come up with the right campaign for the right group of the people and increase our try to increase our revenue. Data typically includes analyzed includes relevance of the ad search to the query or site visited. So, we are searching on many things and based on our search items we may want to go ahead and show the right ads. If you are searching for Reebok we do not want to show the ads or uh, related to data science or Hadoop and if we are searching for Hadoop or data science we do not want to show the ads of Reebok or Nike guys ok. Overall historical effectiveness of a given ad. Uh, the more the historical data that we have about our users, about their clicks and where they went, where they navigated and things like that, the more the insights we can get out of the day, time of the day and day of the week. So, imagine a 
organization which has data for the past 10 or 20 years and somebody maybe a top C level executive may wants to understand the patterns you know every month uh, we are right now probably in the month of September and let us say a C level executive wants to understand the past 10 years in the month of September what are the products that were being sold or in the September 2nd week what are the products that were being sold uh, maybe in the month on a monthly basis on a weekly basis on a daily basis and things like that we want different kinds of data what do we have we have a history of data so again that becomes part of the big data and being able to effectively get that data needs some advanced analytical techniques in getting those insights guys okay all of these factors are independent of the user so no matter who the user is wh what the user is they essentially predict what an average person would like so based on the some preferences based on some cost customer activity we're able to predict the uh, what other customers who are similar to these customers are able to click or not click on or may be interested or may not be interested in collaborative filtering you know again something along the similar lines where certain group of people who are purchasing some products would be interested in some products so when a new person comes in you know what are the recommendations to be shown well it depends on the what others have clicked on and what they may have purchased that is what is collaborative filtering guys okay this technique increased yahoo's prediction accuracy by 10 percent again from a data science standpoint that's a pretty good um, uh, increase in the accuracy rate um, is is a quick example of an uh, ads effectiveness guys okay moving on telecommunications and utilities how can we actively prevent service outages instead of simply reacting to them okay um, there is if you may have heard about a term called predictive maintenance it's a it's a, it is a process of predicting when a particular instrument or maybe a sensor or my device is about to fail even before it fails we are able to predict that it is about to fail and then what do we do well we do not have to wait till it really fails we can go ahead and predict if it, it is about to fail and go ahead and take care of it before it fails maybe fix it and as a result of that we will be able to save more money it is always more uh, profitable to fix an existing device than buy a new device guys okay so what is happening aging power water telecom infrastructure in many locations okay so all these are the utilities guys utilities have a lot of infrastructure set up throughout the um, cities countries and things like that they are very expensive it is not easy to replace the components when they fail guys okay so cost of failure can be very expensive okay so what do we do we may want to install sensors we may want to gather the data we install the sensors on every device that is possible or on most of the important devices where the costs are high and things like that and we gather the data store it in uh, using something called Hadoop via Flume or Kafka again and then we want to perform some advanced analytics in trying to figure out the trends you know how they are performing at any point of time and understand the thresholds and trends and things like that eh, which will help us in predicting how a particular device is doing and then it will help us in predicting if it is about to fail or not guys okay so again machine learning comes to our rescue and by uh, identifying which are the components which are about to fail what we are doing is we are proactively predicting if they are about to fail and we can go ahead and try to fix it as a result of that what will happen is we need not replace this existing components which are very expensive with new components but we are able to save some money so that is exactly what the predictive maintenance is guys okay so that is what we are referring as predictive equipment failure here moving on to health and pharmaceutical how can we predict protect patients from dangerous drug interactions guys so let's take a slightly deeper look more accurate medication reconciliation a physician needs to know what medicine the patient uses okay many times we go to doctors and some may have emrs electrical med med medical records and some may not have okay you may go to multiple physicians but if each physician does not have an idea what the other physician has given they may not really have an idea about it guys okay drugs can negate one and uh, one another or cause deadly interactions we may have visited one physician then after a few days due to some situation or due to being far away we are visiting another physician okay the drugs or the medicines that physician one has given us may be negated may may not uh, really work with the medicines that another physician is giving and may impact the health of a patient guys okay unfortunately the data is not always accurate in other words not all of this is tracked in few countries some patients may not recall all medications when as well some patient he may have visited a new physician and he may not recall what the other physician 
uh, what the medicine names are that he may have used because they are generally complex names and others might intentionally omit others you know sometimes patients are not willing to open up and say hey you know they have uh, taken certain kinds of drugs or medicines and a 2007 study documented discrepancies in 80 percent of the patients. So, survey has been conducted and it seems 80 percent of the patients were not really interested or were not really opening up and uh, explaining what the drugs or the medicines they were using guys ok. Overall quite similar to the product recommendation use case. So, if we compare it to the product recommendation use case what do we have? Well, a customer is like a patient and a product is like the medicine that they are about to use ok. So, on certain customers if certain medications is working and a new patient comes in we we can already predict you know what medication might work on this customer versus what medication might not work on this customer guys ok. So, recommenders can be agnostic which means you know they are independent of what is being uh, evaluated. In other words, whether that is customer or whether that is patient data, when it goes in deep into the analytical, advanced analytical or the mathematical principles, it is unaware of that. It does not care. It just looks for, it just works based on the patterns that it is finding based on the mathematical principles guys ok. Result is a list of medications that similar patients report ok. So, again uh, it is about uh, it is about what might work on a patient and what may not work on a patient may will help in determining what an, what might work on a new patient who is coming in and physician can specify specifically ask about or test for use of this. So, based on these predictions physicians can go ahead and actually recommend a few tests for uh, for the uh, health of the patient to be done additionally to make sure you know certain uh, certain new things are not coming up and things like that. The, so, that is an example of a healthcare use case guys ok. So, in this module, so in the next module we will come up and have a quick look at the project life cycle uh, the, uh, of data science and uh, thank you for tuning in. Please uh, stay subscribed. Thank you.